Good morning, modern shedders. This morning, we're gonna start tapping our maple trees today. It's supposed to get above freezing, so who knows, maybe the sap will start running. Let's get to it. So our box from Amazon came in. I believe this is our maple syrup tap. Or syrup taps, let's see what we got. That's a birthday present. These are our taps. Let's go in the basement and open it up. We got a fun birthday present. No, it's not for my birthday. Let's stay right here and open this up because we got the washing machine going in the basement. And that audio would just pick up terribly on the camera. I'll leave a link in the description down below to our shop on Amazon and in our shop I have a lot of the stuff we use and I'll put this kit we got. There was quite a few different kits on Amazon for maple syrup taps. The reason I chose this one is it comes with 10 taps. But the biggest reason I like, let me get it open. The biggest reason why I chose this kit, one of them, is the taps are three feet long. A lot of them, the hose was only two feet. So this way we're gonna have a five gallon bucket. I wanna make sure we can have it the right height and still sitting nicely on the ground. It came with the 5 16 drill bit that we needed. So we already have the drill bit we need. And then it came with a little book. I don't know if it's any decent of a book, but it's a quick start guide. So I figured it can give us a couple of guidelines to go by. Can read through it and then we'll get outside and we'll start setting up. I need to find some more lids. I can only find four the other night when I got our buckets. I'm gonna drill a 7 16 hole in them. And I'm gonna do it close to the edge, not in the middle. So this way when I'm, my line's coming down from the tree, it's up against the tree still and not way out in the center. Now we have the hole. Let's go get set up and go outside. Leave this bit in here. So we're gonna be using a 5 16 This is a 7 16 drill bit for the hole for the hose. While we're over here, let's grab a hammer. We'll need that to just lightly tap in. Might as well make sure we're nice and warm. What I was just reading says you can plan on one gallon of finished syrup for every four to six trees you have tapped. So we're gonna be doing 10 taps, so we should be right around our two gallon goal. That'd be nice. Thing in the back of our truck. Let's go get set up. I'm gonna start with the trees closer to the house. That way they're easier to access. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. So half of our taps are gonna be super close. And we go one down there, six, seven. Awesome. All right, let's get set up. All right, we're gonna be drilling 5 16 hole. It's gotta be at a slight angle. Downward to keep the sap flowing. And so when it freezes, it doesn't freeze in place. It's actually coming down. We need to go about an inch to an inch and a half deep. Let's get started. The other thing I was reading, it says the south side will start to de-thaw sooner. So we know the south from our weather station is this direction. So if we put it like there, perfect. Let's grab a bucket.
The reason I'm going with white is you don't want your sap getting warm. So white will reflect the sun. Grab one of our taps. This way we can know the height. Now a lot of the stuff I'm telling you, I'm telling you to remind myself too. So like with the bucket, we want to make sure that where we're putting the bucket isn't sitting on a bunch of snow that's going to melt and then the bucket's going to fall and it's not going to fit, our hose won't be long enough. So there's some ice there, so I know that bucket's going to drop some. So with my bucket, I don't want to have it too long of a stretch. I don't want to go like this, because if my bucket drops, then I'm in trouble. Move my bucket out of the way. And on the birch trees, it takes about 150 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. That's why they're not tapped that much. You also want to make sure you see nice, clean, blonde wood. That means it's good and it's not decayed. You don't want to be drilling into decayed wood. You don't want to go super hard because then the tap won't come out easy at the end of the season. One down, we'll leave the lid off of this one because that's easy to get to. Put the lids on. We'll put the lids on ones that are a little bit harder to access. Seven sixteenths hole is perfect. It fits in snug. I like it. All right, the one we're going for this time is way down back. That's why we're bringing a lid with us. We got a lot of snow to climb through. Now this is a big old tree. I bet you we could do two taps in this one easily. But I'm still going to limit this tree just to one. We're only having ten taps. So I think it's better to experiment this year and find out which trees work better for us. And I can keep an eye on it. If one tree is flowing better than another, I can take the tap out of that tree and put it into another one. That. And I'm going to go about yay high. Oh. It got cold last night. Or it's been cold. But today, today it's supposed to warm up to around 40 degrees. So the sap might start flowing today. This will be good. Oh yeah, a nice blonde wood. Awesome. There we go. Two taps, two taps down. Eight more to go. I'm getting excited. Ugh. Getting the use out of our tools, that's for sure. Alright, our next maple tree is right here. We'll put a lid on this one too. I think I see my ribbon in the snow. Yep, for some reason the ribbon ended up on the ground. 
clear out a spot for our bucket right here. All right. A little bit of an angle. Get a little tap. I like it. This is going to be a good season. This might be a fun one to get to. We got a stone wall right here. Not much snow over here. I have to thank our friend Michelle. Her writing her book this year helped encourage me and get me motivated to tap our maple trees for the first time. I'm going to put a link in the description down below to her free ebook she's given out and a little snippet of her book that's going to be coming out soon. All right. I'm going to go right here. Get the bucket out of our way. I don't want the I don't want any sawdust falling in it. Perfect. I like it. On to the next one. I'm really excited that all the trees so far are this close to the house. That'll make it easy. Let's bring two buckets with us this time. This one's nice and close. Clean out my snow out. Boy, what a layer of ice everywhere. Look at that nice layer of ice. I bet you that's probably four inches thick. I don't know if that's going to be good or bad for the syrup season. I guess we'll find out. A nice tree. Not as much ice over here. Still some, but a lot more snow. That'll go there. Put the tap around the front side. Just above our ribbon. So I'm trying to keep all my taps on the south side. I'll see if it helps or not. All the trees so far have been nice and healthy, or at least where we've been drilling them have been. All right, these are all the ones that are close to the walkout basement side of the house. Let's move to the other side of the house, and we have four more taps to put in. So. A 
couple of buckets there that I washed this morning. We'll use one of them. I'm not going to use the tree near the pig pen because if I let the pigs out, hopefully soon on pasture, they'll be going for that bucket. tree we're doing is over there so that'll be nice and close to the outdoor kitchen yep, ice right here too another reason why I'm using the white buckets versus any other color bucket is there's a lot of uses you can use buckets for all the buckets we've been buying lately are food grade buckets. They come in a various of colors and you can use them for multiple things. So in my head, I'm telling myself white is food. We only use our white buckets for items or things that we're going to be putting food in. So that way I know anytime I grab a white bucket, if I'm using it for syrup, if I'm grinding meat or, any, or if we're doing stuff with the vegetable garden, white bucket means food and it's safe for doing any of that. Blue, red, green. I can do who knows what with that. So that's just something to think of because there's so many uses for buckets. I'd hate to grab a bucket that I had chicken guts in from when we were harvesting our chickens and using that for maple syrup. That wouldn't be good. Or something I'm trying to keep in mind. All right, so we're gonna be losing some snow here. So I like right there. You know, I've had a few people leave in the comments lately about you're talking to us like kids or we're not morons. Quit repeating yourself and stuff like that. Most of the time I'm talking to myself. This is a friendly reminder to me. So I remember what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I like to think out loud. It helps me remember and learn from my mistakes and learn to move on. So don't take anything personally. And somebody left a comment in the first maple syrup video. Thank you. As a reminder, don't boil your sap in the outdoor kitchen. Your outdoor kitchen will get nice and sticky. So that goes for anybody. If you're making maple syrup, don't do it in your house. Don't do it in an enclosed area. Everything's going to get sticky. It might smell good, but you don't want a sticky house. All right, so we should have three taps left. Most of them are going to be all close to the house. I don't think we're going to have to go to our sugar bush way up the road, which is good. We'll save that for next year. Boom. The nice thing too about the covers, they don't keep the hose in there because they want to curl. So the cover's going to keep it straight, keep it in place, snap the cover on tight, and for some reason it falls over. You're going to lose some because of the hole, but if it's snapped on there nice and tight, you're not going to lose as much sap. I'm thinking maybe my last bucket, we'll go back to that big tree and put two taps on that one instead of having to walk further that way into the woods. We'll keep them all close by and easier to get. That's kind of my thinking. I don't know though, I just found a nice tree in the woods. I think we gotta tap that one. It's not that far through the woods. Here we go. I might regret tapping this one, but we do have quite a few over here. So I decided we want to get more taps. 
We got one, two, three, four, five. There's five more trees over here anyways that we could tap. Let's not push our limits. All right, at least this one's a straight shot from that last tree. Alright, while well, I'm out today at work, I'll stop and pick up six more lids. I'll get those put on later tonight. We'll be good to go. Maybe the syrup will be flowing today. We'll find out. Fingers crossed. Thanks for coming along on our journey today as we learn maple syrup making. It's been fun. I'm excited. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping over. If you're not subscribed yet, now's a great time to hit subscribe and ring the bell while you're down there. That'll turn on notifications. YouTube may or may not let you know when we upload a video, go live, or post something to the community tab. So the best way to keep up to date with us is go on over to alumnaacres.com. There's a link for that in the description down below. Sign up for our newsletter. <laughs> Crazy roosters. We upload a new video every day at 6 a.m. So we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.